Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. So the topic of today is going to be about radical Advaita Vedanta. And uh, to some of you, you may want to want to wonder, like, what do you mean by radical Advaita Vedanta? Um, Advaita Vedanta is a practice of non-duality. And that means that there is absolutely no other. There is only the oneness. And it is this oneness that is continuously is in a dance with itself. So, in this dance, it includes the drama of the life and the joy, all the laughter, all the love, the hate, all the ups and downs that are happening in life that we're experiencing is a part of what they call it in Sanskrit, the Leela of life. The Leela of life means the dance of the life. But this dance of the life that is happening, that it appears to be real, and we're all in it, we're all experiencing this aspect of life that we're in, in Advaita Vedanta, in the non-duality practice, is basically an illusory event. It's an event that appears to be on the screen of consciousness. It's like a movie being projected on a screen, on a, mo uh, on a white screen, when you go to a movie theater. So you are watching a movie, and in this movie anything can happen. People fall in love with each other, they fall out of love, uh, people may kill one another, there's all kinds of stuff happens, there's misunderstandings, there's drama, there's trauma, there's laughter, there's comedy, there's the joke of life, all sorts of things happen in, the, in a movie theater and we're watching a movie. And uh, normally movies, they're having a subject and they're trying to refer to, they have a message. Uh, or they're purely entertainment. But, and the same thing happening in this life. Exactly identical thing is happening in our life. That our life is full of different events. All kinds of things happen. Sometimes you may go through a period of life that, and that could be like from few years to decades, that everything is going your way, everything is going right and you're expanding, and you're having so much fun, and you have a lot of good friends around, around you. Your businesses are doing well, you're making a lot of money. Whatever you touch turns to gold. It appears like you cannot go wrong. And, uh, and it also gives you this feeling, this illusion, that it's you doing this, and you're almighty, you're all powerful, you're strong, and you're manifesting and you're creating these kind of things. It gives you that illusion. But it's simply an illusion, it's not real. It's a part of the lila of, the, of, of life, the dance of life. To create an illusion that you are a person separated from the whole, you're almighty, and you have the power of manifesting things, and manipulating life to go your way. 
However, this is far, far away from the reality of life, from the reality of what is. Number one, there is no individual entity separated from the source. Currently, they say there is 7 billion people on this planet. I don't know, 8 billion, 6 billion, it doesn't matter, it's just a number. But when I do exam and check people out, when I go around and look around, I have not found one single individual on this planet who has its own independent free will. I have not found one, and I've looked into a lot of people. Not one single person on this planet has its own free will independently. There is the illusion and the appearance of free will but it's only appearing to be, and it's only an illusion. And that's all there is. There is choice. We make choices every day. Every day you have to make choices. Every day you have to make judgments. Every day you have to use your measuring skills to measure things, choose between things. However, and it, all these choices that we make, all these measurements that we calculate, all these judgments that we're doing are not being done by us as an individual. It's all being done by one power source, that this power source runs and rules the entire universe. So I want you to take a moment and digest my words. Let's just take a moment. And what does it mean if we don't have any free will? Zero. Zero free will, even though it appears that I've decided to pick up this remote thing, I pick it up, I put it down, I pick it up, I put it down, I pick it up, I put it down. Oh, this is my free will, I'm doing it by myself. But this action is not doing, being done by me. It's an illusion. It is the source, the will of all that chooses to do this action. And in a way, in a way, I'm, what I'm sharing with you, these are concepts, and there is different aspects to that. In one aspect, we can say that the source, the creator, the grand spirit, the power of God, God is a trickster. God, who has created the entire universe, it's also a joker, it's also a trickster. It likes to trick you, it likes to joke with you. In what way? In, what, in the way that it appears as different ones, it appears as many. The one that appears as many. Let's just sit on that and for a moment meditate on it. What does it mean, the one that appears as many? One source appearing and so many different people. Is that possible? If we are separate entities, if we are individuals, 
then this is a very, very scary endeavor because you are left out on this planet all by yourself. From the time you were born, you are not connected. From the time you're born, you're not supported and you're all by yourself on this planet. And if that's the case, how long do you think you would last if you weren't, if you're not a part of the whole, how long do you think as an individual on this planet you can live? A day? A month? A year? Ten years? How long would you last? What is your intuition? What does intuition is? Why do you get intuitive messages? Where do you get your ideas, your thoughts come from? Yeah, where, where do they come from? Where do you get inspirations? Where do you get all these information? So for an author who's writing a wonderful book, for a physician or a surgeon that all of a sudden gets the idea of doing surgery in a very authentic way, for a scientist to come up with a very new theory or a way of creating a brand new uh, invention, where do these information coming from? So as an individual entity, that means your brain has to be manufacturing information, manufacturing and inventing things. And if that's the case, then why doesn't everybody can do the same thing? Because everybody's got a brain. Most of them are in the same size. So, why some people are much more innovative, why some people are much more art artistic and they have all these talents and or athletic and some aren't. If everything is created equally, then people should have equal talents, equal intelligence and uh, their health should be equally, relatively the same. But that's not the case. That's not what's happening. Why we decide on doing this, going this direction, and we end up in this direction? Why? Like, I remember I met this girl uh, a few years ago, I mean, several different people I've met, girls and guys, telling me that I thought I'd finish school, finish college or high school, and I'm going to be traveling around the world. I want to just see the entire world and do this and do that. And then the next thing I know is I'm pregnant and I have two kids, and now I'm living in a small town with two kids and the man who I started with, he left me and now I'm a single mom stuck in, in a little province in the middle of, I don't know, Sweden or Norway or Poland or whatever. This is not the life that I was planning on. And I know thousands of thousands of people who have the similar situation or you're in a good shape, you're running your business, you're doing whatever you're doing, and one day, one night you sleep, and the next day you wake up, and you're paralyzed, or half of your body is not working, or you're in extreme pain, and, or everything is like what just happened to my cousin, my dear cousin, my beloved cousin that I love very much, age 39, one night, driving back home, he loses control of his vehicle 
and he hits a telephone pole, that was like a month ago, and instantly he was killed. Instantly, at age 39. How does that happen? Is this your choice? Did you decide on this to happen? Is this your free will? I want to know where does free will come and do things. I mean, did you decide that you're going to be born the way you look? Did you decide you're going to be born to your family? Did you decide on your race? Did you decide that you're going to be born poor or rich? Smart or ordinary or dumb? Did you decide that you're going to be tall or small or overweight or skinny? Uh, did you decide on this life that you're living? How much planning did you do on this? How does your free will come into any kind of equation? In this equation, how does that apply? How does it work? I'm curious. I want to know. Of course, we're talking about entrepreneurs, successful people who are whatever they're doing right now, everything is going their way, you know, life is saying yes to whatever they're doing, they're very successful, things are going their way, and they're saying, yes, it's me, I'm doing it, I'm me, 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 me. And if you talk to disabled people, or unfortunate people, or people who live in the ghetto, and they were born in, I don't know, in some unfortunate situations in somewhere in the world, they are more inclined to believe that there is a destiny because I want to know where is the free will comes into the equation for them at that point. How did they decide to live in, I don't know, in Iraq or Syria or Gaza or be, you know, living a life that you ruled by another country or they're dropping bombs on your head or how did you come to that? How did you decide that? Where is your free will in this equation? How does that work? How much your feel free will is in coordinates with yeah, you're living your life and suddenly, all of a sudden, your country gets invaded by another country and there's rockets falling on your head and you lose half of your family. I we saw it, like what happened in the Second World War, you know, like half of the Europe was just like in shambles. How did that happen? How much free will was exercised in these places? Did people decide on that? Or do people decide on this life? Or the COVID came and some young people catch COVID and they died in one week. How much your free will, free will is involved in that? Is this your manifestation? Did you manifest that? Or what about you're in a marriage and all of a sudden your partner cheats on you? or your partners get in a car accident and dies and leaves you with two kids. Is that your free will? Did you design that? I'm really curious on all these people who are talking about manifesting uh, this and manifesting that and the power of manifestation and they're really cheerleaders is I hear this manifesting story when things go their way. As long as things are going their way, it's cool. But what, what about when things are falling apart? No matter what you do, it falls apart. No matter what you do, you lose money. No matter what you do, someone cheats you. No matter whatever you do, it just goes sour. I want to hear at that time this person says, 
I am manifesting this. I've not heard of anybody claiming responsibility for manifesting disaster. Because you're, then I would say your manifesting skills suck. You definitely have not learned anything. You need to go back to take some more workshops and, and groups and whatever and, and work on your manifesting skills because you're de definitely doing a shitty job. So, the whole thing, I mean, of course, everything is to be to be argued and there's discussions about it because there's not one angle into this thing. We're living in the world of duality, so everything I say, everything I'm bringing up right now, it also could be discussed. Uh, there could be a discussion about it because the opposite part of what I say is equally true. The people who are from this group of free will and manifesting blah blah blah, they have their point of view, and of course somebody is talking about that there is no free will, and it's all destiny, or it's all the will of God, it's all the will of Allah, and that could be argued too. Both sides could be argued when we open our mouth, when we're speaking in third dimension, means the moment we speak, things become and manifest in duality. Both sides do exist. And both sides verbally could be argued. So, but for me, personal experience, direct experience, is, of course, through the grace of my teacher, of pointing me out, the love of my teacher, the love of my guru, who saved me and fished me out of this ocean of ignorance, and put me on the right track, and 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 pointed out Zarathustra, don't look at my my finger, don't look at my finger, look at my finger where it's directing. You need to go this way. This is the way, not this. So what I'm saying is not my words. That there is no free will. What I'm saying that saying no free will, what I say is for you to go in that direction and discover, discover it for yourself. Because then it's your direct experience of realization, of understanding the presence, the presence of the Absolute, of why or how the Creator of all appears as so many other people, it gives them the illusion that they have their own free will, and, and operating through all these people with the sense of separation. But in absolute reality, there is no people, there is no you, there is no me, there is no others. They're all, they're all manifestation of the oneness and they're all being run by the one. And in reality, separation is impossible. Separation has never existed. Separation cannot exist because there is no room for a separation. It's just an impossible thing. Unless separation happens in the unknown, 
But can you know the unknown? Can you know the unknowable? But in the known world, separation doesn't exist. It's just not there. You cannot be separated from wherever you are, from your environment, from your society, from planet Earth. We're all breathing the same air. There is no brand new air here. The air you're breathing is the same air that billions of people breathed this air throughout the history. From the first day of the planet Earth, from the time of the dinosaurs, from the time of the ape man, from the time of the Chinese Khan, from the time of Jesus, Jesus spread, he breathed the same air, Hitler breathed the same air, Mother Teresa breathed the same air, we're all breathing the same air. There's particles of all of these people that are inside you. How are you separated? The food you're eating is the food that every other human being on this planet has already ate. You don't eat fresh vegetables. You don't eat fresh meat. This is the meat that has been eaten by every single human being on this planet. Did you know that? Did you know the water, the air, the food, the vegetable that you're eating, every single other human being on this planet has, has eaten it? Everything has been recycled. All the molecules of every other human being on this planet is existing inside you. All the experiences, every atom, because they're all concealed on the planet Earth. There's no brand new air coming in, there's no brand new water coming in, there's no brand new soil coming in. All the bacteria are here, all the viruses here, all the funguses here. They're all eating each other all the time. And how are you separated from that, Mr. Big Shot? So it is a total illusion. Okay, so now let's say we come to this understanding that, okay, so I, just, I got it, but now what? What do I do? Nothing. You do, you do the next thing. You continue living your life as you were living your life. If you have no free will, and you have come to this point, knowing not having free will, what difference does it make in your life? You're going to continue living your life as if you have your free will. You still have to go to the grocery store and make decisions. You still have to make decisions between two People, if you have, you meet two different partners, then you have to decide between one. You're apartment shopping and you see two different ones, you have to decide on one of them. You're going to go buy a car, you have to decide on which one you want to buy. You still go ahead, act like as if it's your choice. But it doesn't matter what you choose, the final results is already written. You're welcome to exercise your free will, but the final result is what's already written. 
How do you like that? So, okay, one other question comes. How do I cope with that? The way you cope with it is very simple. Understanding this, your mind will freak out because your mind is going to come and say, what do you mean I'm not in charge? What do you mean I don't have free will? So how am I going to be working? How am I going to be taking care of this? But then in the same time is the deeper you go into it and the deeper you understand it, the more you can chill out because, okay, I don't have free will. So that means it's the will of the box, the will of the Allah, it's the will of God. Okay, so it was the will of God that brought me to this point. Then I can relax and kind of chill out, not have to be so hands-on. I can let go of the will means I can let go of my sense of control, that I have to control everything, because everything is taken care of. So now you can relax, let things happen. Things are going to happen anyway, it doesn't matter if you relax or you don't relax. The difference, the difference is that when you're letting go, your quality of your life changes. Means that you don't stress, you relax, things come to you. Something falls apart, someone steals money from you, you're not brewing over it, you're not banging yourself in your head every day, you just think that's cool, it's all right. Let it go. Money comes, cool, you take it. You lose some, you have a lover, your lover leaves you, say, okay, whatever, fine. A new love comes, fine. You welcome whatever wants to go and you welcome whatever wants to come. Yeah? Uh, any questions? Hi, Kathy, you have some questions? No questions? You have to go. Okay, sweetheart, nice meeting you. If you, have, you can unmute yourself and talk to me if you want. So is uh, the soul plan that shit? <laughs> What's that? So is then everyone's soul plan shit or also the illusion? Yeah, they're stories, they're concepts. Okay. So yeah. the, the, the essence of all is breathe in, breathe out, get it, lose it, go step by step, live in the moment, live now. That's my, my sense of your words. Yeah, Is yeah. Right? Try not to live now and see if you can do it. <laughs> it's not so easy, my dear. <laughs> yeah, try, try not to live now and see if, if that works. It's horrible. <laughs> it, it, it's impossible. It makes sick, it makes crazy. Yeah, it makes, well, yeah, you can see the world. Because yes. they're trying to live in the past or in the future. Yeah, always, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now is, uh, now is um, something special. It's, uh, I, I think it's, to learn to stay in now, it's the biggest present you can have. 
You understand me? Yeah, in a way, yes. In a way, it's your natural state. You're here. Yes. You're always here. But the most people forgot it. Yeah. You're always here. Where else can you be? Can you be somewhere else right now? And be here and be there? Can you be in like Canary Islands and be here, right? Be at where you are? You can't. No. No. It doesn't work that way. You know, for me, it's sometimes difficult to to accept this because, you know, I was dead when I was 10 years old. And in this moment, I was on a few places in the same time. Right. I was in my, in my body lying on the, um, on the bed. I was on my head. I was on my feet. I was over me. I was in the tunnel and I was in the light. And I could see through the walls and I could hear the thinking of the, of the people lying uh, in bed to die. Yes. So I know how it is to be trans, uh, is it trans-dimensional the right word? I don't know it. So it's hard for me to, to say I can only stay here or be here. Well, you, well, just know you're always here. Your mind, okay. your mind goes to other places. Yes, okay. But when your mind goes to other places, means that your mind goes to the past. Because mm -hmm. other places are what? There are projection of images of com compository information in the mind of all information from the past. Can you okay. imagine can you imagine a, a dimension that you've never been without using the past? Can you, can you imagine something of future without using the past? No. 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 The only way you can imagine future is by using the past. Yep. And that happens in your mind. And that happens here and now. So even though you think you're not here, it's impossible to be outside of here because there is nowhere outside of here and there is nothing outside of now. It simply does not exist. So here and now is the only place that exists. You can do whatever you want jumping jacks, bang your head against the wall, take a million different courses, do your human design, go do your cutting cords with your ancestral past, you can do, you know, prepare yourself for future um, migration to Armageddon or to other planets or Atlantis, do whatever you want, honey. You're always here and you're always now. There's nowhere to go and there's nothing to do except in your mind. The rest of it is mental ejaculation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, mental ejaculation. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> and how difficult is it to be here right now? It's very natural, isn't it?
how difficult is to be here now? How much effort does it take? Okay, my beautiful brothers and sisters from all over the world. Our next uh, English Academy will be next Wednesday, as always. Uh, we realize that the time in Europe has changed, so I'm going to make some adjustments. Um, and my Farsi Academy is on Tuesdays. Um, my website is zaratustra.tv and uh, my email is info at zaratustra.tv and my social media pages are zaratustra5d for, for those of you who are viewing this broadcast on uh, Instagram I thank you for sharing that really helps me and helps everybody I appreciate it thank you for your comments and uh, I am coming with an online program for my uh, Farsi's, Farsi speaking brother sisters uh, around the world. And um, 
uh, they've been asking me to offer something because most of everything I've had so far it's been in English. So uh, it's time for me to shift and help my brother sisters from uh, Farsi uh, with Farsi speaking language. So I'm very happy to do that. Thank you for joining me. Sending you my love and light. Stay in your silence. Stay in this quiet place that you're in. Um, don't jump into the world right away. I mean, stay with this silence because this is something very juicy right now happening. Just stay with this after I finish the broadcast. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. Namaste and I love you.